And welcome to the first episode of a new sporadic series that I'll be adding to every now and then. I know I said last time that I was taking three weeks off, but I hope that this is a short video to produce and I'll be able to crank it out in a few days. I often include little amuse-bouche pieces of advice that I stumble upon in my devlogs, and I think it'd be worth branching that off into its own series. Hell, it would make my own life a lot easier so I could reference them more quickly instead of having to look through all of my scripts. So this series is going to be exactly that. This is episode one of Indie to Indie, the series in which I'll go through some practical advice for game dev that I've discovered while doing game dev myself. This is going to be an on and off series that I'll add to in between my devlogs. Anyways, this pilot episode is going to be one for the programmers, truly a synchronous C++ in Unreal Engine. I recently kvetched about the quality of Unreal Engine's asynchronous documentation, so now I'm gonna give you all a couple helping hands so you don't have to repeat the same slog that I did. Asynchronous code is sort of like quaternions. Most of the time you don't need to know them, but when you do, you really do. Let's keep one thing in mind. We're game devs, so that means we have to keep frame rate high enough to be playable and, more importantly, enjoyable. So if you ever have code that is very computationally heavy, custom pathfinding in my case, asynchronous code allows you to run all that stuff on a different thread so that way your game's frame rate doesn't tank. This video applies to both UE4 and 5, but I don't have Unreal Engine 5 installed, so I'm sticking with UE4. I've created a demo project to go over a basic example of how to write asynchronous C++ that I will iterate upon by adding more robust behavior and functionality. And I do mean C++. While you can set timers and blueprints, you cannot node your way to truly asynchronous code. And since this is a programming episode, I'm going to upload the project with the code to a GitHub repo. Check the description for the link. Asynchronous code and multi-threading is basically diving straight into the deep end for programming. So if you're unfamiliar with C++, you might want to tap the brakes. As I said, just like with Quaternions, you can get around a lack of technical knowledge with creativity and elbow grease. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get down to the good stuff. The easiest, aka best for indies, way to write asynchronous code in Unreal Engine is to use the F runnable class. And if we look at the docs, we can see they're very good. So I've already written all the example code step by step. And the first step is this, just a class that prints out step one, this code is running asynchronously every one second. As you can see, this step one class is a subclass of F runnable and I've overridden the virtual functions init, run, stop, and exit in order to set up my asynchronous functionality along with a constructor and destructor. As you can probably guess, f platform process sleep is used to sleep this thread, in effect making it wait for any amount of time. You can use this to quote unquote slow down code if it is still hugging too much processor time. And if you take a look in the constructor, you can see that I create the actual thread that will be run asynchronously there. You can create this later in order to delay the asynchronous code running. And as you can probably guess, by the name init, init just initializes things, either returning true to launch or false to not. And stop gets called when the thread itself is killed. Next, I needed a way to actually start running this runnable from the main thread. So I created a nice little actor class that I'll be using throughout this walkthrough. I have functions that I expose to blueprints for each step, and I created a blueprint actor that is a subclass of this actor. So I'll just be launching my example code from from the begin play node. Important to note is that I overload this actors on destroy so that way I can delete the F runnable for each step of this video. So let's give step one a whirl and yep, it works. However, when I stop it, we see one problem. It keeps running even after the actor is fully destroyed. This is a memory leak and it is not good. Enough memory leaks and you will tank the frame rate. Exactly the opposite of what we want. Now why is this happening even though we set up a destructor and everything? Since run never stops, thread kill will never actually kill the thread since run doesn't stop to check if it should stop. 
So we'll move on to step two, how to prevent that while also adding a bit more functionality. This new runnable will only run for a given number of times and then it will stop. Plus, when I delete it in my actor, it will actually stop. As you can see, I'm using the variable bstop as a flag to actually stop run if it needs to be stopped early. Now, when I create the thread in my actor class, I just pass in the number of times I want it to run as an argument to the constructor. And if I stop the game, it cleans itself up nicely. Now for my complaints. Run should only be used to return the exit code of the runnable object. Zero means execution ran fully, and anything else should correspond to a different reason why execution ended quote unquote improperly. If I wanted to do something a little more complicated than that, we're going to have to look beyond what we have right now. And this is where promises come in. Let's say I wanted to do some real hard math on my new thread, getting a list of all prime numbers from two through 10 million. Your first instinct as a programmer may be to just pass an array of ints by reference. But bear in mind, we are working asynchronously. I do not know when run will end. So if I use that array before run finishes, I won't get what I expect. Maybe if you've done a bit of multi-threading before, you're thinking callbacks. Listen, I've seen how messy nested callbacks can get, and I've written more than my fair share. So I will not be using those. Instead, I use promises. What's a promise? Promises, or futures, are programming patterns that lets you do something with the result of either regular or asynchronous code once it's ready, hence the name. Promises are not the result itself, but a promise that it will turn up eventually. If you're familiar with JavaScript, you've probably used promises before and really like them. I rarely praise JavaScript, but promises are so nice in it. But unfortunately, while Unreal Engine does provide them, they're not as nice as in JavaScript. So unless you want to program something better yourself, the out of the box stuff is all we got. So how does a promise work? Well, just like with my Frenable examples, I've set up examples to show you. Here's a basic version. As you can see, we get the future that the promise promises. Then we can add a function that will run immediately after the promise resolves to a value. This function is called a continuation. And when I hook up and run this basic example, four is printed just as expected. Important to note with promises is that if you set the value more than once, you'll get a game crashing bug, which is really bad for the frame rate. The advantage of promises over callbacks is that I can chain these continuations without nesting them. So everything stays more easily readable. But again, not as nice as JavaScript. And for this example, it's important to note that even though I set the value of promise B before promise A, the result of promise A is still printed before promise B's result. So chained promises are good to use when you are waiting for the result of more than one asynchronous thingy or want execution to happen a fixed way regardless of resolution order. So for step three of the F runnable example, here's that prime number bad boy featuring promises. As you can see at step three, I am now deleting the promise in the exit function since this function gets called after the thread fully finishes. After that, I just had to write a few more lines in my actor class to take advantage of promises. You could try deleting the promise in the continuation instead of in the exit function like we did in the chained promises example, but it'll cause some bugs, so don't. So when I run it, I have to wait a little bit, but ultimately it works. Then if I stop the game before it finishes, it cleans itself up nicely. And if we look at the FPS, hey, if it's good in the editor, it's better in game. Now this brings us to a design decision. I'm setting the promise value to an empty list if I stop the F runnable early. Now to me, this is inappropriate. I'd much rather resolve to a different value specifying why execution stopped. So I created a wrapper to add that behavior on top of the resolution value. It's a lot easier than you'd think. I just hammered out the following lines. As you can see, it's super simple. Now I can set the promises value to different resolution types to specify why execution ended. And since it's an enum, you could of course add more resolution types. And now the continuation function can have different behavior based on why the asynchronous code stopped. For this video, I kept it simple, but you should get creative and do whatever you want. And 
and when I run it after waiting a bit, it works just as expected. And if I stop it early, it says so. And as a final piece of advice, if your code is crashing, you might have to add a minuscule sleep before setting the value of the promise. Asynchronous code is weird like that. I like to add a preprocessor directive so that way I can easily toggle it on or off if I need to. And that ought to do it for you. Keep in mind you can add extra methods to your Frunnable subclass as needed. After all, it's your code base for your game. Make it work for you. And that's it for this pilot episode of the new Indie to Indie series. Let me know what you think. As I said at the start, you can get the project with code from the GitHub repo linked in the description. So help yourself. As I said, this will be a series that I dip into now and then. So don't expect back-to-back -back releases like with the math series. Editing update, there's also a Discord server and you know, it's pretty chill. I like it. So come on by, say hi. There's a game dev channel, art channel, cooking and baking channel, and of course a math channel where I and hopefully some other people will start fielding math questions, but you know, we're having fun so far, so come on by, say hi, make yourself welcome. And as always, thank you for watching, I appreciate your time, and I hope you have a good day. If you liked the video, please give it a like, and if you want to follow along with this new series, my devlogs, or the now largely finished game dev math series, please subscribe. I release new videos every two weeks sometimes even when I said I was going to take a week off. And your comments are all wonderful. I read all of them and try my best to respond well. Keep it up. I'm also on Twitter, where I definitely post in order to vent about creating 30 plus long minute videos. I also post what I bake when I bake it. So to see things fresh out of the oven instead of waiting for the fortnightly baking segment, give me a follow there. And speaking of baking segment, I missed it and I hope you did too. Let's get to it. And this baking segment is going to be a double feature since I only took a single photo of both of the things I baked for this segment. So first one is a, another apple galette. Again, I really like this recipe. However, um, I keep on having trouble with the compote. I think, you know, every time I've made a compote, it, uh, the crust, you know, pops. So, but again, uh, I used, oh, this compote was really good though. So it was definitely worth, worth the burst crust. Uh, I made it with apple calvados and oh, it was really great. I really, I had a slice of this with some friends and I really enjoyed it. So this was a good one. And as you can see, there's a bit of an egg wash on the crust. So this one came out really good. I was happy with it. Well. It came out good, aside from the burst part, but yeah, that apple compote. Um, well, my rule of thumb is whenever you're cooking with alcohol, it was got to try a bit, <laughs> a bit, maybe a more. You got to make sure it's still good, still fresh. You don't want to be cooking with bad ingredients after all. Uh, so this was great. And of course, I mean, that pie crust recipe, it's amazing, easy, quick, love it. Absolutely love it. And next we have something I've never done before on this channel. Um, so over the over Christmas, one of my gifts, I got a pizza steel. So I've started baking pizzas now. And uh, this is this is basically my training arc is coming up for pizzas soon. So this is the first pizza that I baked that wasn't a calzone. The first one was actually a calzone and I was too distraught to take a picture. But this was the first pizza technically <laughs> and as you can see it I mean it came came out pretty good uh, again this is uh, I'm trying to do a since it is a pizza steel I tried to do a Neapolitan style pizza and you know day two I'm still dialing it in uh, if you stick with the arc which is when I just baked a pizza every night for a week including the calzone uh, by the end of the arc, I was I was nailing it. The crust was super thin. So this is basically day two. Still don't know what I'm doing. Uh, there's some hot honey on it, which I really like hot honey. It's a good ingredient. Made everything by hand, everything by scratch. Tomato sauce, dough. Well, not the cheese, I guess, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, I'm using... Apparently, you're supposed to use, uh, if you're making like a New York style, Neapolitan, of course, uses fresh mozzarella. This is a high, uh, excuse me, uh, high fat, low moisture mozzarella. So it's not fresh mozza mozzarella, which I use later on in the arc. But this one came out, you know, I liked the calzone too. 
The calzone was also tasty, despite it not being a pizza. I really enjoyed it, but ooh, this was good too. So I was really pleased with how this first successful pizza attempt came out. And when I, we continue going through the pizza arc, you'll see that I improve pretty quickly and the pizzas get better and better. So that's it for this episode. And you know, pizza, that dough, it, I did use my sourdough yeast, my sourdough starter, so I am, I can say this without fear. The yeast in the air is free. Go out there and bake. It's delicious, it's good for you, and it makes a great gift. And it's an easy way to show your appreciation to the people you truly care about. And I care about all of you. Thank you, and I will see you next time.